Hey, it's Phil here from Euroheat, and if you're considering installing either a ground to water, or otherwise known as geothermal, a water to water, or an air to water system, and you think that one is always better than the other, let me tell you why that might not be the case. So these days, geothermal is all of the rage, and it's a great thing, but the tricky part is it's not always the best thing for you. It's not always the best thing for every project. And let me tell you why. The reason why geothermal is considered so good is because it has a relatively high efficiency, let's say up to 500%. And it gets this efficiency because it has a, a really stable, say ground temperature, which means that when outside it's cold, it might be say five degrees or zero degrees outside, it's still 15 degrees in the ground, for example. And so that means that your heat pump, which is connected to the geothermal system, has a higher efficiency when it's trying to produce hot water, let's say for a heating system, for a building, or for a pool, or for tap hot water. And so this definitely makes sense, doesn't it? Because it's easier to pull heat from, say, the 15 degree ground than it is from, say, the zero degree air outside. And so where this also makes sense is, let's say in summer, when we're cooling a building, or we need to cool something down, we can either try and reject heat from, that we're pulling from, say, the building. We can try and reject that outside into, say, 35 degree air. Or we can reject that heat into the ground, which is always at that stable, or around always, at that stable 15 degrees. So it's much easier to reject that heat into the 15 degree ground than the 35 degree air. And so it's not only that geothermal is great at this, but so is water to water. And for your particular applica application, the water to water system might be better. And this is because with water to water, say a below ground aquifer like we have around the Perth region, the aquifer is actually at a quite a constant stable temperature of around 21 degrees. So that means that it's easier to say pull heat out of the aquifer in winter even than it is out of the ground because the aquifer is at 21 degrees but the ground's at 15 and the air outside might be at five let's say in, in a Perth winter and a cold morning. So geothermal is a fantastic energy source to connect to your heat pump and water to water as we just discussed might be even better as well. Now this is not to discount air to water because obviously air to water has the lowest investment cost say can uh, we know we all know it through air conditioning and so it doesn't cost that much to just invest in an air to water heat pump whereas it might cost a bit more to do the water to water or the ground to water. But what we must consider is what we're actually trying to use the energy for. Let's say if we are trying to heat a building during winter, then yeah, ground source or water source is fantastic. And if we can't use any of those options, then air to water, it's fine. It's just the efficiency will lower a bit because the air is a bit colder outside and it's a bit harder to pull that heat out. But let's say we have a geothermal system for pool heating. Now, during the winter months, it's fantastic. It's, it's exactly the same as we talked about before, where it's, mu it's much easier to pull the heat out of the ground than it is out of the air. So you have a high uh, efficiency of the system, a high COP. But let's flip it, L let's go to summer. So now it's summer, it's say 35 degrees outside or even 30 degrees or 25 degrees, but we're still trying to pull heat out of the ground where it's uh, say 15 degrees at a constant temperature. So that means in summer, let's say for this pool heating during summer, in summer the, the geothermal system actually has a lower efficiency for what you want it to do compared to the air to water heat pump. So for these reasons, it's actually really important to consider what your final use is, what all the parameters are, are around this final use. And that way you can structure the, the heat source accordingly. And so, yeah, sure, it can just be an air to water system, a, a ground to water or a geothermal system or a water to water system. But you can also combine these with heat recovery systems or you can have hybrid systems. So for example, you could have a hybrid air to water and geothermal system where when the air temperature is higher than the ground temperature, it pulls energy from the air. But when the air temperature drops, it pulls energy from the ground. So you're always maximizing the efficiency. Or you could have a heat recovery system where instead of say rejecting this heat, uh, or pulling this heat from the ground or rejecting heat when you don't want the heat, you can collect that and use it in another process. And these type of systems are quite common and can definitely help you out too. So if you'd like some help in figuring out whether geothermal, air to water or water to water is the right thing for you and whether a hybrid or a heat recovery system could help you at all, 
give us a call at Eurohate. This is what we love to do and specialize in, and we'd really like to help you too.